Hello everyone, welcome to back to the channel. Today we are going over Matthew 4, book 14. And um, I had a small group today, so I'm kind of excited. Because um, I do love surprises, in case you guys didn't know. I do like surprises, I really do. I, I, I love being surprised. Not pranked, surprised, okay? There's a difference. But, um, you know, just... just Knowing that I am going to read this chapter with you guys and sharing the faith and things like that, you know, it, it makes me happy. But like, and also not knowing what I'm gonna read about, it's it's also like very, I don't know. It just makes me like excited that um we're gonna be reading um God's word and that I have no clue what we will be reading about because I haven't read these. Um, I'm not familiar with the Book of Matthew as much as I should, so. Let's get started. Um, Lord, thank you so much for this beautiful day, Lord. Thank you because we are here. Thank you, Father, for the beautiful time that that we have together, Father. Thank you so much for whoever clicked on this video, Lord. May you help them and protect them and guide them and, and provide for them, Lord. Bless them deeply, Lord. With your goodness, with your mercy, with your compassion, with your love, Father. You never run out of it, Lord. Thank you for all you you done thank you for all you're gonna you're gonna do in our lives lord thank you so much and i i just hope that they are close to you and that you don't let them go lord in jesus name amen all right at that time herod the tetrarch heard the reports about jesus and he said to his attendants this is john the baptist he has risen from the dead that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Now Herod had arrested John and bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For John had been saying to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. Herod wanted to kill John, but he was afraid of the people because they considered John a prophet. On Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced for the guests and pleased Herod so much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he ordered that her request to be granted, and had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl, who carried it to her mother. John's disciples came and took his body, and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, 
Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. And there we go, guys. Amazing stories that we have in here. This chapter, um, quite sad, and it really affected a lot of people. The death of, of John the Baptist. Um, he was almost like family to, to Jesus. He was almost like, I think he was actually his cousin. Uh, because um, he was, John was the son of... Mary's sister something like that they were close she and another lady and um, John was was born first but um, after him was Jesus who was far greater and and um, he that's what he announced to the to the people there is one that comes um, after me that is way greater than I am so he, he was really preparing the people um, to make the way straight for the Lord. And so uh, the 5,000, feeding the 5,000, um, the five fish and two, the five loads of bread and the two fish is quite a popular story, very common. Uh, it's basically um, trusting God with what you have, taking it to him and seeing the blessings multiply. Just having that trust in God, having that trust in Jesus, knowing that He will provide, that you will have what you need. It's such an amazing story that, that anyone can relate to, that anyone can apply to their life. Because we, we might think that we are not capable of, of something, but just just take it to God. He wants He wants to help out. And just, just see how He works through it, how He works in your life. And... And if you believe, then you'll see it. But if you don't believe, you're not going to notice. So um, be careful with um, with your eyes and your mind. And um, you know what? What do you have to lose? If you, if you just, if you believe a little, what do you lose? So that's, that's something that um, I, I really uh, might start considering as a question what do you have to lose going to god trusting in him seeing if something happens if something changes because he he's ready he's been waiting all this time he doesn't give up on us so let's give him the chance uh so yes uh walking on water very beautiful um, something that was really important to me was that he went to pray and then after that he went to uh, you know catch up with the, with the group and um, you know sometimes we get afraid and we um, you know everything's great everything's fine we're walking on water and then we we're get, we fear something and we start sinking and it says here that immediately Jesus reached out and caught him. Peter cried out, scared, save me, Lord. And Jesus immediately reacted, helped him up. Of course, he did lecture him a little, but that that response of immediately helping, immediately coming to our aid, saving us, it's exactly what he did um, on the cross. He didn't wait to be 60 years old on the cross. He waited 30 years. 30 years to, to show us the example of of being baptized, of believing and being baptized at a long, uh, not a young age, like a child or a baby, 
but older as an adult where we we have the the ability to really consider it is this what i want for my life is this what i want to do do i really want to get baptized is it something i understand is it something that um am i understanding what it means what it represents to be baptized so it's it's something that isn't meant to be taken lightly especially when you're not a believer or a follower of christ because you you have to be a believer first you have to receive christ and then get baptized there's an order to this so um very very important that um we take into consideration the things he did and when he did them and um for three years he was in um preaching the word and, and sharing the good news and letting people know hey god's kingdom is here it's coming so you know repent leave and um he did his mission now he's sending us and that's why we're here sharing our faith uh reading the bible with others small group the church where we are we are trying to to prepare the people to prepare others and um you know some of some people are not um reflecting god as as they should some people are just not living the christian life that we were called to to live and, and that's why some of the others are working hard to uh you know cover that um the gap that is there because we we're not all the same we all live differently and some of us don't have the same um you know the same knowledge as others some of us are still growing spiritually well we all are but i mean we're at different stages we might not understand completely what we are supposed to do or how to do it so um very important that we help each other even if you're not catholic or, or religious or christian help each other be kind love each other and and just appreciate your each other because we we can't do this alone we need other people to survive whether it's for uh support or communication or business whatever it may be we can't live on our own it's like a like a baby it can't care for itself it's it's a child it's it's an infant it needs somebody else to take care of it to give it food uh, provide water provide shelter provide um you know somewhere to sleep somewhere where it won't be out in the cold freezing or uh, out in the sun um getting a stroke or you know things like that we need each other and it's very important that we remember to be kind just like how god is kind to us every day we have to spread that kindness and those blessings later on we have here um the people recognize him he's been healing the sick he's been preaching the news his fame has really been growing and and as his fame grows his enemies do as well so very very important that we remember that that um you know being with the lord being with god being close to him him being in us it's it's such a beautiful thing but it doesn't take away the problems we have the things we deal with life doesn't become perfect in a way we still struggle we still have issues we we still have feelings and feelings are good they're not there's nothing wrong with emotions because god made us like that he gave us emotions for us to feel anger sadness happiness uh you know being scared being afraid um being nervous all these beautiful emotions that make us who we are and having God at our, at our side, having God um, backing us up, is really, um, you know, that, that power of, like, strength and courage and confidence. 
It's beautiful. And no one else can, you know, provide that for you. You know, you, there's sure there's people that you might admire, people that might make you feel safe, you know, that help out with those emotions, but what if that person gets sick? What if that person is late? What if that person forgets? You know, it's we we might rely on others, but that doesn't mean that they will always be there. And God is, God is eternal. <laughs> Jesus was human 2,000 years ago, more than 2,000 years ago. He was human. He became human, lived, died, resurrected, and went back to heaven. The Father, well, the Father is the Father. <laughs> But um, the main thing is that God has no beginning and will have no end. He is perfect. He is great. He is powerful. He is everything we could ever need. Everything we will ever need. He will last forever and so will his kingdom. Therefore, God cannot get sick. God doesn't forget. God is not late. God is not going to be stuck in traffic. He's everywhere. So, there's no need to worry about him not being there for you. He is a father, he's a friend, he's a judge, a brother, a best friend. He's everything we could ever need. He's a teacher, a leader, a king, a lord, a master. He is everything, everything we could ever need. He is everything, and... I, I do hope that you you give him a chance because honestly, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? I am I am in love with this question now because let let me know. What do you have to lose just by believing? Giving him a chance. Answering when he calls your name. Because that's that's what he has done. He has called us by name. He knows who we are. And he knows what we are capable of. So Tell me, what do you have to lose? He is calling you, he's waiting, he doesn't give up on you. What do you have to lose by answering back, by replying, by accepting what he is asking you to do? Okay, so, with that said, let's let's finish this in a little prayer, and um, I'll wish you all a good day. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for this gorgeous day, this beautiful lesson of, it's just one chapter, Lord, one chapter a day. And I know that I could be giving you more time, Lord, and, and I want to give you more time, Father. Help me so I can spend more time with you, Lord, just talking to you, thanking you, singing to you, Lord. Just little things like that, Lord, that, that really help me get through my day and, and cope. And most importantly, glorify you, Lord, because it is all to you, all the glory, Lord. And may one day every knee bow before the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And everybody glorify you and praise you, Father. For you are the one who has blessed us. You are the one who created us, Lord. And you are the reason why we are alive, Father. You, this air in my lungs is yours, Father. I belong to you and... I hope and I pray that you take control of my life, Father. I surrender to you. Use my time. Use me, Lord. Make me new. Change me so I can be of better use to you, Father. So I can spread the word and help others see you, Lord. Because we have nothing to lose, Father. We have nothing to lose by, by believing, by trusting you, Lord. We have nothing to lose, Father. Please remind us that you are everything we need. Show us the way, Father. Show us how you are working in our lives. Help us, Lord. And hold us on tight, Lord. Don't let us get away. In you I trust, Lord, and I hope that others will start trusting you too. May I reflect you well, and and... May you speak through me as I meet other people and 
and talk on this um, social media site, Lord. May it all be for your kingdom and your glory, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Alright, guys. Well, that was chapter 14. I honestly do not remember how many chapters there are in Matthew, but that's book one of the New Testament. So we have like 26 more to go after we finish this one. So really exciting. Can't wait. Um, also, small group on, on Fridays. We are going to start reading uh, the book of John. And I believe that's John the Baptist. He wrote his own book. And um, I, I think that's that's what it is. And um, Or it, I think it was someone else. I'm not really sure. But we'll find out. And um, it's one chapter a week. And then we get together on Friday and we talk about it. We discuss. We talk. And so um, I'm really excited about um, not only doing Matthew, but also um, working with the book of John uh, with you guys. So really excited to be working on those books. And, um, you know, because they're books of the gospel. They talk about Jesus. They spread the word, the good news. So I'm really looking forward to that. And as always, guys, take care. God loves you. He provides. He is willing to listen. So go to him. Go to him first. Whatever you do, talk to him. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be fancy. Let him know what's going on and how he can help and what you, what you um, expect because he, he really wants to talk to us and hear us and, you know, provide because he has everything we could ever need and, and if we ask, we shall receive. And once again, what do you have to lose? Have a great day wherever you are. And don't forget, Jesus loves you. Good night.